The Koopa Kingdom is shown not to be the greatest place to live in the Super Mario universe to say the least. <laughs> The mistreatment of nearly everyone involved shows how these creatures should resent what's happening, and while some of them do, most clearly don't. But why is this? Why does the majority of the Koopa Troop openly express admiration for what their organization stands for? How did Bowser rise to power in the first place, and what is the secret behind all of this madness? Well, in this Mario 3 today, we're going to find the answers to all of these questions and discover the truth behind Bowser's cruel leadership. The Koopa Troop dates back centuries, a regime with countless traditions, and one of them is choosing their leader. But this isn't necessarily a monarchical system in which the offspring of each leader is automatically crowned the new one, based on evidence observed within the Super Mario games and the storyboards that surround them, there seems to be some specific traits that certain Koopas have which gives them higher priority in the line of leaders. A main piece of evidence that supports this is Kamek's choosing to take care of Baby Bowser caring for this one baby Koopa specifically. Why? It's not mentioned anywhere in the game that Bowser is from a line of Koopas who have held a reign of power for many generations, so there has to be a reason related to Bowser himself. So, from a young age, what attributes about Bowser are easily noticeable from his guardian? The first thing is the spikes on his shell. This is seen in Bowser Jr. as well, a trait that was passed on from Bowser, which should lead to evidence supporting the monarchy theory but there is still no evidence of Bowser's parents having the same genes. Which could make the possibility of Bowser possessing these spikes stem entirely from genetic mutation, whereas Bowser Jr's possession of them is from Bowser passing them down. More evidence that supports Bowser being chosen for his abilities stems from the Koopalings, who as I'm sure many of you are aware of aren't actually Bowser's genetic children and instead were adopted. Why were they adopted? because each and every one of them possesses one important trait for Koopas to rank highly, the spikes on their shells. Bowser happened to be the newest Koopa to possess this ability, so he became the leader, and others who followed had become higher ranking officials. These include the Koopa Trolls and Boom Boom and Pom Pom in some games, and there are others who possess this trait as well, but these are the more well-known ones. But spikes alone isn't going to secure you the spot to lead the Koopa Troop, It'll boost your rank for sure, but that's about all that's guaranteed. There are other abilities which Bowser has that increases his power greatly. One of these is the ability to breathe fire, something seen by Bowser constantly. In some games, Bowser Jr. is shown to be able to do this as well, but other than those two, there are no members of the Koopa Troop who can do this. As for where Bowser got this ability from, we either leave it up to genetic mutation again, or Maybe his parent is part of the Yoshi species or something. The third key ability for Bowser to be selected as the king is his ability to get big. Bowser is shown as early in the timeline of canonical events as Yoshi's Island to possess this ability. And if Kamek can notice all of these traits that one Koopa has as a child, then he can surely sense that something dominant is on the horizon for the future. So now we know how Bowser got into leadership, but what has happened since then? As previously established, the lives of those within the Koopa Troop is significantly less enjoyable than the ones lived by the happy-go-lucky Toad species. So how does Bowser get all these people in the Koopa Troop? He's able to do all of his evil deeds through slave labor. There's no other way of describing what goes on here. I've seen some people speculate about whether or not Bowser hands out the dough for his soldiers to do his bidding, but that wouldn't explain their dying allegiance to him. Literally. Could somebody pay you anything, anything, to have you be lit on fire and sacrificed as part of the cause? That's definitely something I wouldn't want to get into, so that's why this is a system of slavery. A system where the free thinking are almost entirely eliminated because these troops are trained by birth by the most elite and loyal members of the Koopa Troop, brainwashing them from the moment that they're most vulnerable when they're willing to accept anything told to them as fact. I just mentioned the free thinking, and they obviously exist, and this explains why there are some good Koopa Troopas in the Mario universe, and other forms of Bowser's troops coexist with the inhabitants of the Mushroom Kingdom. This theory doesn't just explain Bowser's origins or the system in which his army is within, but it also explains defections to the system. If you're somewhat lost to this concept, I'll refer you to Finn from The Force Awakens, as ridiculous as a concept of a person who from birth who has been trained to serve the Lord and kill a specific enemy turning against their cause is, 
It can happen as unlikely as it seems. But even with everything that this theory explains, I'll take it one step further. What is the secret to making this plan foolproof? Ensuring that this army is stabilized, that the troops remain loyal and respect their leader, and that the leader doesn't die. Well, to know this, we have to go back to the beginning of the story. And the guardian of Bowser who raised him, Kamek. You see, Koopas are a very diverse species. They're like dogs. They're all classified as the same thing while having many different classes, which differ greatly from one another. Some have the ability to come back to life in the form of a skeleton, such as a dry bones, or in terms of Bowser, specifically, dry Bowser. But some have the ability to revive others when there's seemingly no coming back. Magic Koopas have wands with many special magical abilities, shown off well in their Mario Maker appearance, where they can transform regular blocks into random objects or even remove them entirely. But Kamek specifically has another ability, one that allows him to revive those who seemingly can't come back. Sure, Bowser's ability to survive as only bones can work as long as his skin is melted off in lava, but what about increased forms of damage, something that only magic can bring back? And this is what Kamek specifically brings to the table. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. The Koopalings have wands as well, and in New Super Mario Bros. 2, yes, yes, I know they called the fourth one number two, but that's besides the point. In this game, they use their magic to the fullest, powering up their master and even reviving him after our hero seemingly eliminates him. But how did the Koopalings get this ability? Does it even belong to them? Well, my thought about that is that for protection, in a similar way to how Kamek took care of Bowser, he wanted to do the same for the adopted children. But there are a lot of kids here, not to mention Bowser Jr., the rest of the Koopa clan, spending time reviving Bowser himself when he needs it, and his own old age because he's obviously been around for a while if he was taking care of the fully grown Koopa from birth. He obviously can't take care of all the kids himself entirely. This is why he provided the Koopalings with magic wands. Valuable and rare possessions which have the ability to inflict damage on Mario, and his friends when they invade their fortresses, and wands that when used together, can revive a loved one who has met their demise. Kamek is the key to the entire process. Without him, there would be no Koopa King, no Koopa Troop, and certainly much less havoc in the Mushroom Kingdom. Peach shouldn't be mad at Bowser at all. Well, well, maybe a little, because he has kind of an obsession with her after all, but... But, but she should really be mad at the elder of the troop, the one who may not be the leader, but is certainly a valued asset. Bowser may find his slave troops disposable, but the one who he will never dismiss is the one who gave him everything. Well, at least he won't dismiss him intentionally. <laughs> there are clearly many mysteries surrounding Bowser in the Mario universe, and that's my take on that one. But why does Bowser team up with Mario in certain situations? Well, that's the question that I answer in this video, theorizing why Bowser parties with Mario. Remember to subscribe for more videos like this coming really soon. Thank you so much for watching.